the Scottish Labour leader Richard Leonard, has quit his role. He is seen generally on the left and an ally to Jeremy Corbyn. His statement reads, I have come to the conclusion it is in my best interest of the party that I step aside as leader of the Scottish Labour with immediate effect. This was not an easy decision, but after three years, I feel it is the right one for me and the party. I personally wasn't overly impressed with him, but neither was I really disappointed. There's not much you can do when you don't have much autonomy from the UK party. Labour have been squeezed by both the SNP and the Tories. There's no quick turnaround. And if the new leader is a centrist or from the right of the party, expect no resurgence anytime soon. However, the story actually goes deeper and it's much more worrying. According to the Times, Keir Starmer held talks with potential donors, one being a multi-millionaire businessman, Willie Hawley, which I probably butchered, who was given money to the party before. Robert Latham was also reportedly on the call. He is a lawyer who gave £100,000 to Starmer's leadership campaign. This is from Evolve Politics. During the call, it is alleged that potential donors told Starmer and Rayner in no uncertain terms that they would not be handing over any cash to the party as long as Mr Leonard, who was widely considered to be on the left of the party and was a political ally of Jeremy Corbyn, remained in his post as leader of Scottish Labour. A spokesman for the Labour leadership also refused to comment on when Keir Starmer last spoke to Mr Leonard or whether he had told him to stand down. However, Sources close to Angela Rayner claim that she was viciously attacked during the conference call when she made clear it is up to Scottish Labour to elect their leader. We also have a tweet from Sienna Rogers from the Labour list. Labour source, who was on call with donors last night, says Angela Rayner was viciously attacked when she made clear it's up to Scottish Labour to elect the leader. And this was orchestrated. So first, we had Starmer courting wealthy donors to come back. Now we have them deciding who the party leaders are. The rich takeover of the Labour Party is complete. We also have a clip from an interview from Neil Findlay, the MSP. He makes the accusation, which in my opinion is completely correct, that these wealthy donors pushed Richard to quit. I think there's a number of things at play here. Richard Leonard has been undermined from the very beginning of his leadership by uh, people within the Labour Party, within the parliamentary group of the Labour Party, who could not accept that they're preferred candidate lost and uh, they've thrown their toys out the pram from the beginning and they've indulged in some absolutely appalling behaviour with the continual undermining of uh, Richard and anyone or anything associated with him and it's been absolutely outrageous behaviour. Um, was uh, there other people involved? Well apparently um, we, we hear reports that there were other people involved and that uh, last night there was a meeting between uh, uh, some senior people in the party in Scotland and at uh, uh, Westminster level uh, with millionaire donors to the potential millionaire donors to the party uh, who said that they would only donate to the Labour Party if Richard Leonard resigned and that provoked, I understand, the intervention of the UK leader to get rid of Richard Leonard. Does anybody really think that Keir Starmer, if he were to become PM, will represent the people? Will he put an end to austerity and try to address the enormous income inequality? If you believe that, then I'm sorry, you're, you're pretty naive. There's a reason why these wealthy backers give money. They don't do it from the kindness of their hearts, they do it because they want something in return. On to our next story, an even more shocking one. Labour have hired a former Israeli intelligence officer, or some people say spy. The man in question's name is Azaf Kaplan. He was in the Israeli military intelligence as an officer in Unit 8200, which is its cyber warfare branch. The job he now has with the Labour Party is titled Social Listening and Organising Manager. So, social listening is a way for organisations to monitor online conversations that talk about one's company or brand. Obviously, sounds pretty dodgy to me. I mentioned he was in Unit 8200. What exactly is that? And what do they do? Unit 8200 specialises in spying, hacking and encryption. It carries out blackmail, mass surveillance and systematic discrimination against Palestinians. In 2014, a group of whistleblowers detailed how the unit spies on Palestinian civilians living under Israeli military occupation. According to his LinkedIn profile, Kaplan was in the Israeli army's military intelligence division from May 2009 to November 2013. He was a Unit 8200 intelligence analyst 
and later an officer. This is excellent work from Electronic Intifada. We know that his LinkedIn profile states that he has experience using a digital monitoring platform and human rights analysis to keep tabs on voters in Israeli elections. Assad's Facebook shows that he is friends with Shai Massot and Michael Rubin. Massot worked as an Israeli embassy agent. He was ejected from the UK four years ago for plotting against MPs. He also tried to create a pro-Israel youth group secretly within the Labour Party. I will definitely link to the Electronic Intifada's article in the description. It's a brilliant piece of work. Imagine for one second, Jeremy Corbyn hired an ex-Russian spy. I'm pretty sure that would have been an immediate end to his leadership. This story is completely astonishing. Some people are already trying to deflect any criticisms of this as anti-Semitic. Of course, including John McTurnan, not the brightest guy I'd say. However, this is a legitimate concern. In actual fact, to me, this is a scandal. I even think if Boris Johnson had done this, I'm sure this would get fairly heavy scrutiny from our media. Many people who have been saying, including myself, that the Labour Party is beholden to the BOD and the Israel lobby, we've been called cranks, anti-Semitic, but can they really deny this now? 